So today, I want to thank Mr. Chris King, our guest speaker today. He did a fantastic job last week. Him and his lovely wife have been champions for as long as I can remember, eight plus years in our business and leading by what example? Even through the things shut down, they kept going. And that's what leaders do. You know, they, they put their egos in check and they get after it. Uh, and I'm just so excited. He decided him and his lovely wife. Uh, he hails from Fresno, California. I'll be there in about 19 days or so. Uh, also, not only that, but he was a fire captain. Now, listen up, Californians. He was a fire captain. You think, wow, that's a, they do real well. Yeah, they do. So they cut your pay by 5000 Now, think about it. I don't care who you are. 5000 out of your pay m- monthly, if you make that much, is a lot. I mean, you can, can you survive? See, in other words, don't wait till that happen to you. Get started and start building your business with stuff you can hear today. So, and, and, and not only that, one of, uh, his wife's girlfriends introduced him to ACN, and they never looked back. And one of the things that I, I cherish about the Kings, I never forget, we were up in Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte at, at our home office after uh, we got finished with International. He took his pen off and he buried it under a tree. And he told his lovely wife, and he said to her, honey, I'm not coming back with this pen on again. I'm not going to the next International with the same doggone pen on. See, that to me, that's what this displays, leadership. That's what the extreme ownership. He took ownership of his business and got DAM and I'm not coming back here the same way. How many of y'all go after a year, month? Come on, make a decision today, draw a line in the sand and step over it. And with that said, let's get on a regional director from Fresno, California, the great Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Chris King. Guys, thank you, Mr. Thomas, for the platform you provide for us to you know, tell our stories and try and help other people and be an impact to others. Uh, thanks, great, thanks for our military, our police and fire for keeping us safe here. And uh, it's good to see everybody on today. <clears throat> We're just gonna talk over some stuff this morning and it was, it's kind of our continuing journey. What got us here to RD? And when we all got started, does everybody remember how excited you were? Remember the, the jazz, the excitement, I'm, and, and, and I don't know, I, I, I know Mr. Sam Foster kind of felt that way. It's like, I see the light, I'm going to conquer the world now. And that's how, that, that's how you felt when you got in here. Even Bob, Bob shaking his head, yeah, he, he understands, Miss, Miss Sherian. So guys, you know what's interesting? You know what they called that? You guys, if you remember, because we got to stay excited. I'm going to go over some things on why but they call that ignorance on fire versus intelligence on ice. You guys remember that? Mr. Mr. Provenzano used to say that all the time. Intelligence on fire, right? Or ignorance on fire, ignorance on fire. What does that mean? I'll tell you what, what that meant was that's what got us to RD. Got us to ETL and Mr. Thomas's help. He'd come over and give us some ideas and we'd be excited again. And go, but through that process, we got to, we got to RD. So we were always here's what's crazy, guys. Is we were always when we first got started, we were always in phase one. I mean, I'm not just telling you that from my mouth. I'm telling you that because we didn't care what our team was doing. We didn't care. We were prospecting someone, restaurant, funeral. We didn't care. We were prospecting someone, but we led by example. That's why we didn't have to care about what our team was doing because we were leading by example. So uh, I'll give you an example. So uh, store, just grocery store, just down the road from us here, uh, Save Mart. I'm some of you familiar with Save Mart. Um, we got there and we were cold busted. Our upline RD comes walking up right in the middle of us prospecting prospecting one of the uh, baggers got a name a number and they they went back to work and we got in our car and she you know here and i, I want to i'm gonna read this to you because she, this is what she tells us every time i see you guys out and about because you same town you know in the same area every time i see you guys you're prospecting someone you know wife and i kind of look at each other like isn't that the system? Remember, ignorance on fire. Isn't, isn't that the system? And like, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But, you know, kind of giving us, giving a, giving a props to what she always saw us doing. So, yeah, we were, we were cold busted by our upline. Prospecting. How evil. <laughs> um, but, but understand this, guys. 
do you guys know who you're watching all the who's watching you all the time? No, we don't know who's watching us all the time. We know people watch us. So it, here's my point. Rose had gone out and they uh, uh, she had shown the business. And uh, she was like, you know, anybody ever use a Starbucks to show the business? Yeah, so she's at Starbucks to show the business. And uh, the new IBO had taken a picture of her. So a couple of guys were sitting out at the table next to him and kind of overheard what Rose was doing and started asking after it was all over and they got the, the person left that they showed the business to, they had questions. So it was awesome because she took a picture of Rose in action prospecting people and Rose didn't know she had taken a picture of her until she saw it on Facebook. And it said, my mentor showing how it's supposed to be done. And I was like, oh, look, at <laughs> look at this, babe. And you know, women, I didn't approve that picture. Who put that on there? <laughs> so <clears throat> you don't know who's watching you. And you're going to hear about this again later on because it's important. But once again, we were in phase one. See, our mindset with our warm market, and you have to understand this, because a lot of people, and this is all going to tie together, is our warm market. How many people have talked to their, some people in their warm market for so long, you're about ready to give up? They haven't seen the business yet. They've always got excuses. A month, two months, three months. Exactly. So our thing is, we didn't care how long it was going to take to show you the business, right? But before I stop asking you, to, hey, are you are you available Friday? Hey, how about next week? Monday? How about next week? How about next week? We're going to keep that up, that relentless pursuit, until they see the business. And we don't. And Rose, you know, even even talked about this. Uh, she told her girlfriend, "Look, I'm not trying to be a pest. It just this information. See the excitement." is so important to me, I just want you to see what's going on. That's it. You don't have to get started, I don't care. I just need you to see the business. She finally came to see, she finally came to see the business. But that was that relentless proof. And I think that individual, it was up almost nine months before she saw the business. Nine months, there's, we've been in like 10 years and there's still people Rose has, and I have, that will never have time to see the and don't in 10 years and we're still hey hey sam what you doing friday oh yeah hey, i'm having surgery uh yeah oh uh, yeah yeah so they're they're gonna be there so understand it this is this is our journey and you guys might relate to this then if you but if you're seeing some of that stuff don't worry about it it's like chris has already gone through it i'll tell you what mr thomas has already gone through it sam's gone through it jen's gone through it just keep going, all right? This is a process. This whole thing's a process. So in momentum, we're excited, right? In momentum, excitement. So what slowed us down? Why do we take our foot off the gas? You know why? It's because we became knowledgeable. We learned more. And now there was people we didn't want to talk to. No, they're going to, I already know who they are. They're going to be a pain in the butt. I do, I do not want, what do they call that? We, we talk about it when you first get started, prejudging. Prejudging, right? So we would judge people and, and, and Rose, and it, it, we kind of started figuring this out on our own. Rose was like, well, why didn't you talk to that person about, I mean, look, babe, afraid they got no personality. They're dead. They don't even know they're dead yet. They're going to be buried to figure that out. And I just, you know what kind of work it's going to take to get, and we just kind of like, what are we saying? What are we doing? We're shooting our own selves in the foot. We started prejudging people. What's it going to take to get those people qualified? We have ideas to say that. Oh, man, I just, it was such a pain. I'm like, you have not seen the comp plan lately. Two services, you get someone qualified. It's stupid. So be aware of what could be slowing you down because we had to become aware of what was slowing us down. Like I said, this is our story. If we can help you with this, you know, awesome. So understand this, excitement 
is easy duplicatable. And you remember the, the story of the guy dancing out there all by himself and then before you know it, the whole hillside was out there dancing with him, right? So being excited is easily dupl duplicatable, but knowledge is not easily duplicatable. Do you understand that? You be excited, oh my God, and you get people excited. Shoot, if you start laughing in a group of people, and just start cracking up and laughing like you're watching some video, what happens? Before you know it, people around you are laughing. That stuff's, it, that's contagious, right? And I'm gonna show you, there, there's actually a, um, a study done at it. So be likable because people like excited people. And let me show you this here. Watch this video here. And this is what we're dealing with. And this, is, this, this includes facial expressions, right? So see, Jen, you got a smile, girl. Come on. See, there you go. I like her more already. What's interesting about facial expressions is they cause our emotions. So not only do our emotions cause our face, but our face also causes our emotions. It's called the facial feedback hypothesis. So when we see someone with this face, we catch their emotion, and then we are ready to fight, flee, or yell for help. Luckily, this also works with positive emotions. So one of the faces behind me is a real happiness microexpression, and one of them is fake. <laughs> so the real happiness microexpression is when the smile reaches all the way up into these upper crow's feet muscles, those upper cheek muscles. And this is really important because you know when you tell a frenemy good news, and they say they're happy for you, but you know they're not really. It looks like this. Oh yeah, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so try this, try the fake expression for me first. So just try this fake smile, only on the bottom half of the face. You can even go, uh, uh. It doesn't feel so good, right? It feels inauthentic. Now go all the way up into your eyes. So smile all the way up into the upper cheek muscles. Ah, that should feel so much better. So what's interesting about this facial expression is it causes our own happiness. And we also catch it when we see it. Researchers at the University of Finland looked at these two facial expressions, and they had participants look at photos of people with real happiness and fake happiness. They found that when they showed participants pictures of the real happiness smile, those emotions caught, they caught the positive emotions, and they themselves had a positive mood change. But when they looked at the face with the fake happiness smile, they caught nothing. In other words, if we show up to events that we're ambivalent about, interact with people that we don't really like, we become less memorable. This doesn't just happen in person, it also happens on the phone. So I work with a lot of different clients, corporate clients who are on the phone all the time. They said, Vanessa, I get being happy in person, but how about on the phone? So we decided to do an experiment where we had participants in our lab record different versions of their, hello, the first impression on the phone. We wanted to know if people could hear happiness, sadness, or anger. So we had people record different versions of their hello with happiness, sadness, anger, and while power posing. We wanted to see if they would sound different. So I want to play you two different versions of hello and see if you can guess which one is the happy hello. Are you ready? All right, same person. Here's A. Hello? Here's B. Hello? How many people think A is the happy hello? How many people think B is the happy hello? Very good. We can hear this difference. We can hear this microexpression. Now, I thought this was interesting, but I wanted to take it a step further. So we devised a second part of our experiment where we had participants in our lab listen to these recordings and rate that person on likability. We wanted to see if the happiness microexpressions or the anger microexpressions or the power posing expressions did better. Here's what happened. After we asked people, I do like this person a lot, I like this person a little, or I do not like this person, we found that the happiness microexpressions across all trials for both men and women, they became more likable. Whereas the same person, who made an anger or sadness microexpression were less likable. This is the happy side effect of having your confidence be contagious. Not only do you infect someone else with that happiness, you also become more likable. This is about 
that excitement. It even affects your hellos. So it says something, what you guys, it's like stepping up your game here. So, um, you know, and we followed this system to a, to a T. Customer acquisition, I mean, it's like even Rose. I always tell people, and if you've been to any of my, my, my stuff here in Fresno, I said, if you want to know how to talk to people, go not, you don't have to believe in him, but go watch a Joel Olstein preaching. He's like this all the time. Joe Olstein, I thank you guys all for coming here today. But it's up in his eyes. He's showing, he's being genuine. But that, I don't know if he's genuine or not, but I'm telling you, he's showing a general. You want to talk to somebody, you want to be in front of Like this, okay? So that's huge. But um, part of that and knowing, see, we're going to transfer into his product. So you have to be excited. Now we're talking about product. So how can I be excited about something I don't have? Okay. So initially there was a few things here at the house and we're a product sales company, right? So we were reluctant in changing some of our stuff here. Like we had ADT, you know, like, Hey, we're, we're, we're kind of good. We got the other stuff, but no, ADT. But we weren't believers in everything. Okay. How does that go? How does that affect us now in our facial view and our who we are when we're talking to people about it? Okay. So we decided that when one of my fire captains that I worked with wouldn't become a customer, I asked for the favor. Will you try it out? We work together. I've saved your life. Well, I put chili on the dog, a little onion, maybe some sauerkraut. I put it on. And he goes, no. And worse, we drove 40, 45 minutes to Hanford to meet with him. And then I had to buy him coffee just for him to tell me no. But you know what? We didn't have all the services. Why should he get any services? We didn't have it all. I'm not going to tell you his name, but his initials were Paul Rorba. Paul, if you're listening. <laughs> so how do you expect to knock it out of the park when the person, about the stuff that you have, when the person, when, when you don't have everything? Right? And then, It puts you in position to where you got to lie or go around the truth. She already talked about people can tell. They can smell you like a hunting dog. Man, I ain't getting no services. Uh, but here's what's interesting. When you're getting customers, right? And you talk to one person in a month, and that person tells you no, what kind of effect does that have on you? Like, oh man, how much easier are you knocked out of the box? Freaking Bob ain't gonna be my customer. Who else you talked to the last month? Oh, just just Bob. What do you expect? How are you, how are you going to have a happy face and be excited about your business when you talk to one person and one person tells you no? I'm just saying. What if you talk to 10 people, right? You talk to 10 people and Bob's the only one that said no. How many customers did you get? Do you care now what Bob said? No. When you go talk to number 11, where's your mindset? Woo! Here's what we got. Okay, guys? So we're back to the excitement again. So if you guys don't know, and for, for a lot of new people, some new people on here, look, if you don't know the services, okay, that's okay. You call Sam Foster. He's going to be there to help you get a customer. You listen to what Sam says. Even if it's a three-way phone call, you listen to what Sam says, and you copy-paste, copy-paste. 
and you watch. Before you know it, someone's going to ask you about being a customer, and you're going to pop off something. You're going to be like, that's exactly what Sam would have said. All right? But again, this is, this is our journey. This is our journey, not yours. This is ours. So, and, and, and I'm going to take you to something else because I got another little small video here. But this is about asking for help. Okay? It, it's not a big deal. We love helping people. Shoot, I came from a background on fire for helping people. So, this video is a short, short video. So it's about a little over a minute long, about a minute long. So listen to what she says about help. Use your phone for what it was intended for. Cool. So guys, knowing these things now, you guys are getting some good, good information from not me, but from people who've helped, helped us, right? So let's transition on over to never missing a big event, which you need to be excited for. Everyone's seen the video? The ACM puts out about the big event. We watch that every stinking Saturday, and that freaking gets us jacked up. People are now knowing it. Zig Ziglar, over the top. So, guys, it's about the excitement, okay? So, uh, understand this. They say faith can be transferred to other people, and I believe that's exactly what happens at these big events, okay? The excitement. When you hear real-life stories from others, uh, their faith, belief that they carry, uh, they can be given and passed on to others willing to receive it. Not everybody's willing. Okay, not, not to mention it, it was at the events that uh, we made decisions to, con uh, uh, to convert every single service at our house. So we go to a, an event, we see the booths, we come back home after an event, and now we have Vivint, we have home security, we have ACN stuff that we don't need, but we can talk about it now and, and utilize it. Um, it was a, an event that we made the decision. Like Mr. Thomas talked about, to we're not coming back. We're not coming back to another event as in that position. We were going to be regional directors. And so events, have you guys, who's been to a big event? A lot of people on here. And those big events, are what changed things? So guys, it, it, I have a gentleman who lives just down the street from me. Um, a lot of you guys know who he is. But... Uh, he went his first event and it was, uh, man, we stayed in Chinatown. I can't remember where it was. And uh, he was so jacked up. One event. Cars were driving by and he was asking people, hey, you want to look at other ways of making money? People were looking at him. And he just, what he experienced, we can't get on these Zoom calls. He was there live. Um, and this is with other people on our team, too, at that same event that were new, their first event. But here's what's crazy. Let me get, let me make sure I get this right. Um, he got, Rose and I were trying to count the, the services he got at that one event while he was at the event. And I, back then, it was a two-day, two-and-a-half-day event. He got, like, I don't know, seven, eight Vivint accounts. And that back then, it, it, he's like this. He's got all these iPads he's carrying back with him to his hotel because of what, what he did, what the event did for him. That was huge. We had another couple, sharp as tax, um, in the business. And until they went to an event, they and that it was their home security, they were talking about, uh, uh, well, you know, we got a, a year free home security because our home's new, you know? Um, so yeah, we're, we're good there. We're trying, you know, you know, this and that. And they go to an event, they get to talking to people, but here's what they heard at the event. Like uh, the other IBO we just talked about, got the Vivids. They heard so many stories of people having success, transferring all their services over and the success that, and their stories, they came back. And this was really cool. This is when you know you got leaders on your team. They switched everything in their household over to ACN on their own because of the event. Rose and I didn't say anything. Next event we have, they said, Chris, well, guess what? Guess what? We got this. We got that. We got this. We that. Like, what? Oh, yeah. We saw the light at the International. We saw the light. So, guys, these vents, look at the excitement it builds for them. Right? 
but then again, this is just this is just my story. So when they tell you, and I think it's Mr. Tony Cooper's, an event will do for you what you can't do for yourself, they're not lying. I'm telling you firsthand, they are not lying, guys. Get to Fort Lauderdale, okay? Um, but here's some uh, some more stories about some of the excitement we have. So you guys, I don't know, I didn't make anything to do that. You guys ever draw out circles when you talk about the business? I know you have, Sam. Draw out, yeah, Bob. Drawn out circles. I'm telling you, you you looked at our desk, you looked at the front room. We had freaking circles on everything. Drawn out the business. When we talked to you on the phone, because back there was before Zoom. We'd be drawing out circles while we talk to people on the phone. Because it's visual, the visual, visual, well, I can't even say that. Visualization. You know, I said that right. The visualiz visualization and the dreaming is all takes is hand in hand. That's what kept us excited. You'd see the circles and it, it would it would make your heart jump. Right. And uh, I rose and she brought this down here. She goes, we had stupid AC and insomnia all the time drawing those stupid circles. And she wasn't mad about it, but we were just, it is, it's a stupid, it's a circle. But it's the excitement it created. And here's what I said, guys, people saw that excitement. We were in phase one, right? We were in phase one. So draw out your business. Watch what it does for you. There's SVPs that said they saw some guy drawing circles at a coffee shop and are now SVPs. Be excited about it. Draw them circles. So, and understand, even drawing circles sometimes, people still don't see the, the vision. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because we have a... a, a a person on the team that uh, saw the vision, Rose posted it out, and they're super, super close to us, okay? Saw the vision, and it's funny, and I got to give Rose this credit because, and this is what personal development does to you guys, okay? Rose tells, tells him, says, you know what? I ain't stopping this. We ain't stopped doing this business. We're going to get to the top of this company. And we're going to be traveling. We're going to be going places. You're going to still be working two jobs. We're not going to be able to help you. You're not going to be able to go to the places that we're going. She fear of lost her. And with that, see, with that excitement, which created that conviction when he spoke to her, guess who got into business? They did. And they got to RD. So you never know, guys. You never know. Sometimes you're going to have to fear lots of those people. Well, Nancy Kerrigan on the old ankle. <laughs> so just understand that. You know, and Mr. Thomas is really good with this one. Show me, don't tell me. I remember we were sitting down, this young man, great kid. And he was telling Mr. Thomas, I was, oh, Mr. Thomas, and he used to have like a 915 men's group for about a half hour, 45 minutes at, a, at a, uh, uh, the hotel he stayed at down in the lobby. And we, had, man, we had people showing up there and it was the men's time. He says, this is leader, men's leadership time. And uh, this kid was telling him, man, Mr. Thomas, man, this is awesome. Thank you, sir. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And Mr. Thomas said, I was looking over and telling him, he says, that sounds great. Show me, don't tell me. I'd be like, woo. So guys, the same to you guys. Actions speak louder than words. Show us, don't tell us. Be that leader. Mr. Thomas talks about it. So, <clears throat> and it, some stuff we put down here too. Here are some reasons why we, uh, we don't do what we say and say what we do, right? So, we, won't, we, we don't do what we say we're going to do is a lot of times it's fear of loss. So, this is the understanding now of what you're coming up against. Fear of loss. Uh, 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 make a list of the unknowns. So when you're making those lists, you got to, those people, is that that, that pre-judging um, we got to get out of. But see, pre-judging can come back and bite you like it did Rose and I. Oh, I don't want to freaking spend time with Sharon. She's going to want to do it her way. Oh, my gosh. 
her glasses are cool, but come on. You know, so understand that, guys. Understand that, okay? Uh, there'll be breaks in your momentum. This is huge with your psyche, okay? There'll be breaks in your momentum. Understand that. Know it's coming, okay? Um, that's, that's where you got to break through those hard times. You keep that smile on your face, the good smile, not the fake one. How things going in your business? <laughs> Serious? Pay my cell phone bill this month and I got paid for it. Okay? So know that. Be ready for that breakthrough. Um, how about this? Remind yourself today that it's a brand new day. You open your eyes. Be great. Much time was talking about. Be grateful. Okay? This is our journey. We wake up in the morning. Grateful. Right? What's going on today? What can we be? Where are our celebrations? All right? Someone wanting in there. Um, so let's help with Rose. Rose has created a data because we got a lot going on. Anybody have a lot going on in our lives? Yeah, we all do. And I so said they keep us busy, they keep us down. I'm, I'm just that's how I feel about it. Um, so Rose created a daily reminder so we don't have to remember everything, right? And she put it on her phone. Anybody got little reminders on her phone and it goes off? Right? Data reminder of the things she's got to do. And she puts it in certain times. So I think it's 3.30 or 4.30. It's ACN time. So from that, there's no social media. There's nothing unless the social media is involved with ACN and she's posting stuff. Right? And she's been committed to that. And it's really cool at, at those big times. But here's what happens. Her excitement about what she's doing and what she's doing has actually drugged me into it. Okay? So, I mean, now you got, I got me getting rid of people on, on Facebook and stuff and trying to get into groups for posting, right? Or social media, right? So, and when, what I've done is I've set a schedule, okay? So I keep track of my time. So if I'm, well, I'm just giving you numbers. I, I don't have the numbers here in front of me. So from say 10 to 12 is I'm at the gym. From come home, take a shower, uh, eat. And then from one to three, I'm prospecting or I've got specific businesses I'm going to to talk about uh, merchant services. So I set a schedule up and I stay, I stay on point with that. It keeps us on track, right? And uh, what Rose always says, and actually Mr. Thomas says this all the time, but Rose always says, do at least one thing for your business every single day, okay? And keep track of that. That's huge. It shows you you're going, you're moving. You don't feel stale, okay? It's easier to just have that big smile on your face because you've done something. Um, and comparison. Don't compare yourself. I can't compare myself to Tomo. Tomo's got a team up in the Bay Area. He's doing great. I love, I've always loved how he talks to people, how he, he, he gets people involved, right? I can't compare myself to Tomo or to Sam. I can't do it, right? But here, guys, compare to yourself. Compare yourself, okay? The person you need to be better than than yesterday was you, okay? Compare yourself. So when we talk about comparing ourselves, here's, what, here's who Rose and I have to battle against. Back when we were in solid momentum, this is, this is just what I'm not going to go through. This counter is about ready to meet Jesus. But this is what our account, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's every day. What we had going, every, every thing that's in that is an appointment. Okay? Everything in that was an appointment. Every month is like that. Okay? It's huge. Be in momentum. Phase one. That's what gets your calendar looking like that. We've started it now. I've got this, it's called a weekly planner. Okay? That's what my week's already, and that week's just started this morning. I got the call. I got a 1030 I got to go to, to show the plan, right? Guy who just moved back from, I uh, moved uh, from Alabama here. So be in phase one, create that. Because I'm telling you guys, when your calendar is like this, you're excited. A little story about my mother-in-law. She had a couple of people that were coming into the business, right? And she's never been really excited about people coming to high school. One here, one there. She's got like two at one time. And she calls us. And she's just giddy. 
she's just giddy. I'm like, what's going on with her? And she's like, man, I get two people coming. I see why you and Chris are always so excited. See, being in action creates that, created that excitement in her. And then two people coming in. And it was just two. And I, you know, me being a stinker, man, Lou, man, what you going to do when you have like three or four or five coming in in a day or a week? And she's like, <laughs> but think about that. Because it can happen because it's just about being a momentum. So, uh, Mitchell Thomas always has us for, for, for keeping track. And this is being cognizant of what's going on, which again, helps your attitude. Do you guys know your numbers? How many people you showed the business to this week? How many people got qualified? Here's the thing. Who cares about who got qualified, right? Because that'll come because if they don't get qualified, they don't get the money. Is how many people did they know that you talked to? Yeah, I got one person in and now I got five other appointments because of that one person. Guess what? Your calendar looks like this. Things start happening. You get momentum again. And the momentum's contagious, guys. It spreads like wildfire. I'm telling you. But don't let that lack of belief come in. Stay excited. Um, and and don't, what's that word that people talked about that they say, let me think. Uh, Oh, yeah, quit. Don't ever quit. Has anyone ever, has anyone here paid attention to my t shirt this morning? Huh? You may see me struggle, but you will never see me quit. Huh? Here's something I wear this t shirt out. You know how many compliments I get on it? How many compliments of conversation other people start, which opens the door for me to have conversation? Okay? Never quit. How about this? How many of you, I mean, okay, I'm gonna go back to my story. I can't tell you how many people, friends, business partners, people who know me, people who saw the business and, and didn't do it, right? You guys might have had this happen, have asked me, and this is over the years, how's business going? Hey, Sam, how's business going? You know what? You know why they ask that? They ask that because they want to know if you quit yet. You know what that tells me? They expected me to quit. They expecting you to quit, but when you're excited, yes. And so, so Chris, how's that business going? A phone business, dude? Serious? I just paid my bills and made twenty percent off everything. How do you think it's going? Whatever you want to tell them. But that excitement again, you know what? It messes with their head. I mean, I'm just being honest. It messes with their head. So. Know why they're asking that question. Um, but Rose, Rose wanted to add something here. She said, remember, winners never quit and quitters never win. So this is our new motto. I know you, you can crawl, you can fall, you can puke, you can cry, you can bleed, and it can even hurt. But don't quit. Don't quit. And then I'm going to leave you guys with a video from one of my favorites. It's an urge. Truth be told, every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge to quit. Don't you give up on your dream. 
I don't care if you don't have the money, you don't have the help, and you don't have the family for it, and you don't have the background for it, and you don't have the friends for it, don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. It may take you twice as long. You may have to take courses and classes. You might not read as fast. You might not move as quick. You might not have as much. But don't you quit. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. As weak as you are, as tired as you are, as many mistakes as you made, you do make a difference. There is something they would lose if you were not there. There was something that they would miss if you were not there. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. Make a difference. Keep hopping. It's for people that are trying to hop their way back home. Come hell or high water, doing the best they can with what they got. That's, that's who we are, doing the best we can with what we got. And we may not break any ribbons and we may not get any trophies, but if we can learn how to hang on in there, we'll be all right. I will not lie to you, I feel like going on. But I have seen days I did not want to get out of the bed, didn't want to put on clothes, and didn't even feel like brushing my teeth. I've seen days so dark that I just wanted to keep driving, and I didn't even care where I ended up or what you called me. They came, and they passed. And they came to pass. I kept the faith. I kept it. I lost a lot of stuff. I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of strength. I lost a lot of courage. I lost a lot of time. I lost a lot of money, but I kept down on my knees. I was still believing. Broke, I was believing. Lonely, I was believing. Betrayed, I was. If you lose a job, keep the faith. If you lose a spouse, keep the faith. If you bury your child, keep the faith. If you have to downsize, keep the faith. If you have to move in with your mama, keep the faith. If you're at your wit's end, keep the faith. If you have to catch the bus, keep the faith. If you have to thumb, keep the faith. If you get sick, keep the faith. If you lose your kidneys, keep the faith. If you got a heart trouble, keep the faith. You might not get a new heart, but you gotta keep your faith. Keep the faith, people. We're going to the top of this company. We're going to go up there. Maybe we're going to push Miss Thomas over to the side. You can get away and make some room, boss.